I want to share with you a discovery that I personally had in my life. This is a true story. It's a discovery that I made in, in, in my younger age that helped change the course of my life. And when I say change the course of my life, here's a little bit of a backstory. Like I, I literally was headed in the wrong direction. At a point in my life, I lived from motel to motel. I, you know, I sold drugs. I hung out with the wrong crowd. I had a shaved head. I was a knucklehead. I hung out with gangbangers, drug dealers, and killers. Like it was really bad as, at a point in my life, the younger part of my life. And what I had discovered was something that I believe if I didn't discover it, that I would have remained on that same course, much like the people that I was around with at that time. Like I know for certain that a lot of people that I was with or at least around at that time never discovered this fact. And I know this because I see them in social media. I see them in Facebook and I see them because they're friends of older friends that I have. And when I look at look at them, I don't mean to be, be creeping or, or, you know, <laughs> I'm not stalking or anything, but I, I'm curious. I want to know, you know, if I was one of the only ones that really made it out. And fortunately, I, I'm not one of the only ones that made it out. But unfortunately, I'm one of the few that made it out as opposed to everyone in that circle. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you this key discovery, because I believe that if you yourself implement it, you're going to find out that it also works for you. And what this discovery enabled me to do was change my results. So stick around, watch this video. I'm going to show you one discovery that I personally made in my own life that helped me change the results that I experienced today. Let me show you everything I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. In this episode of Sales Remastered, I'm going to teach you a discovery that I made when I was a younger, I don't want to say child. I wasn't, you know, I was, I was an adult, but I was a younger adult. I was around the age of 20 years old. And uh, this discovery enabled me to change the course of my life, completely change the path of my life. And I, I hope to share this discovery with you so that you can identify it. You've probably already discovered it yourself, but you haven't given it the credit that it deserves. And if you're looking to change your results or if you're looking to, you know, maybe get to a place that you've been trying to get to, but unfortunately you haven't gotten there yet, then I hope that this discovery helps you get there far uh, more efficiently than, than, you know, than your efforts are, are helping you out today. And so this discovery, in order to fully really understand it in detail, let me share with you the story that enabled me to discover it to begin with. And the, um, again, as I had mentioned earlier, you know, in my younger years, I personally had, um, you know, grown up in, in an environment where I was surrounded by thugs, criminals, drug dealers, and a real bad influence. And although I had family that tried to keep me away from these things, the truth is, is that, you know, when you go outside, you hang out with your friends, and if you're influenced by the wrong circle, you're going to get more involved and go deeper into that circle. And so, same thing happened to me. You know, I got, I got involved with a wrong set of friends, and it was trendy at the time to be a thug, and so I, I dove deep into that lifestyle. And at one point, I was going, I was literally living in motels. I carried a gun on me. I carried a scale on me. I carried baggies on me. And, and the reason why I'm diving into this past is because I want to share with you that what you see today, you know, me dipping in a five series, me living in a, in a beautiful house in Orange County that I own, you know, me being the sole income earner in my household, me having three kids, a beautiful wife, a wonderful life right now is something that you can too create if you don't already have it or you can make dramatic changes in your life so that you can also experience the finer qualities and all it really came down to was this mainly this one discovery and so I digress I go back to my past and 
And, you know, I, I, I mean, it, it got really bad. Like, I was homeless for a minute. And when I say minute, I'm talking about, like, a good 9 to 11 months in my life, just homeless. And what I was doing was I was just, I was kind of drifting from house to house. And I was staying in, like, you know, drug houses, what we call today trap houses. And, um, you know, at one point, I even uh, spent Christmas Day. Like, I remember I was, I was in a laundry room inside of some random apartment complex. And I say random because I was literally walking the streets of Las Vegas, um, of all places, right? Uh, at, at one Christmas, I think it was the Christmas of uh, uh, the year 2000. And I had just turned 20 years old. And I was bald headed. I had a backpack full of, you know, three sets of clothes. Those were all my belongings. I had CDs and, and all that. And, and I had just really came to a rock bottom part of my life. And I remember um, I had spent Christmas Eve in the casino lobby of the Boulder uh, Casino and uh, you know I had nowhere to go I burned all my bridges and no one to call to and I was just in a real dark state of my life and I remember Christmas morning like I went to the to the uh, to the little cafe right there that was inside the casino I wasn't even old enough to be in the casino and this is how I ended up getting kicked out but I had, I had made up some story that I was uh, waiting for someone to come pick me up and so I ordered food had no money on my person and You know the waitress kept saying like are you done? Are you done? And I was like, yeah, you know I'm waiting for someone they're actually gonna come and pay and so about an hour went by and and you know They finally kicked me out because I was too young. They're like, you know what forget it You don't have to pay cops escorted me out and I really didn't want to go outside because if you've ever been in Las Vegas during the winter time, you know, it's very 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 cold and um, You know, I had this this uh, this bubble jacket that I really relied on to keep me warm, but man, it was blistering cold and it was really windy. I remember, and uh, and so they escorted me out and they said, you know, I got to get off the property. I gotta, I gotta vacate, or they're gonna um, arrest me for trespassing, or I'm sorry, soliciting. And um, anyway, so I'm walking through the desert, right? Uh, Christmas Day, Las Vegas, nowhere to go. I didn't have a home. I was, I wasn't with family. And so I want you to think back, where were you on Christmas morning in 2000? You're probably with your family at home, waking up, opening presents, being around your loved ones. And I was walking the desert. So finally I got so cold, I went into this, um, it was like maybe like good 6 a.m. in the morning, 7 in the morning. And I went into this apartment complex where I went into a laundry room. And I went into a laundry room to shelter myself from the outside world. But I remember spending the whole day and just thinking to myself, man, what what is what's up with you know what am I doing what's up with my life and I'm you know it sucked at the time but I'm very fortunate it happened because around that time was when I snapped out of it and I was like man I'm I'm not going anywhere but two directions I'm either going to jail I'm gonna die and um, and so you know fast forward a couple years or a couple months later and I end up talking my uh, my cousin who kind of raised me she's like my mom um, to let me live with them, but I had burned a bridge so so bad that I uh, You know, I ended up just really like they didn't want to help me no more And the only way that I was able to get the help was let them know that I'm done with drugs and and uh, I want to get into the military and so they're like, okay We'll let you stay here while you and listen to the military and for those of you who don't know the background You know, I'll let you catch another video But my point is is that once I was able to change my environment and once I was able to shift my focus from, you know, getting high to, to being rebel, um, being rebellious against like authority, uh, when I when I shift my focus away from, you know, making money the illegal way by selling drugs or being thugged out or being a gang banger, um, you know, my my mentality, my my physiology, my actions, and my my attitude changed and it really came down to that moment because I literally had hit rock bottom where I knew for certain that the actions that I had taken thus far at my life when this is when I was sitting in that in that laundry mat alone cold shivering right on Christmas Day when you know the 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 theme of Christmas and holidays is the is to wake up around your loved ones, to be with your family, and to enjoy that time. You know, maybe sit around the Christmas tree, right? This is what you know Christmas as, or what you believe Christmas as, from what you see. <clears throat> and 
I was asking myself, like, how come I wasn't in that environment? How come I wasn't living that theme? And it took that to make me realize that it was because of my actions. And so because of my actions, like wanting to be rebellious, not listening, um, what I thought my inner circle uh, uh, was was cool at the time, right? Because my inner circle were against thugs and, and rebels against authority. And so we didn't think it was cool uh, to get a job. We didn't think it was cool to dress preppy, you know, and because we thought that following the rules was not a cool thing to do. And uh, abiding the law was was like uh, was a nerd way to live. And so we had this kind of belief that, you know, you know, F authority, that it's all about it's all about living that thug life. And and so I followed suit. And it was not until I changed my environment and the people who I surrounded myself with and their views that I was able to detach myself from that type of lifestyle. So instead of being around a circle who only knew how to look at problems and focus at, on problems, like, um, yeah, life's so hard, you know, it's all about the streets, I gotta find a way to hustle and grind, I gotta make this money, I gotta do what I gotta do, you know, it's always kinda just that perception of everything being negative and the whole world being against us. And so the only thing that I saw in that circle were problems. Not until I, I, I actually changed my environment and moved into a completely different area. I changed my, my scenery, my, um, my circle of friends, and I surrounded myself around people who were inspired, people who were motivated and, in, and enthusiastic about uh, finding solutions. Like they wanted to figure things out. You know, I, I, I engulfed myself and put myself in that type of environment because that was the only type of people within that area. You know, at the time, or in, there were parts of Orange County that were not as engulfed in, in kind of, you know, um, w with uh, bad areas or hoodlum areas as, as much as it is today. Like it just kind of widespread. But there are parts of Orange County, especially in Garden Grove, that was not necessarily engulfed with with gang areas or, or kind of like, um, you know, uh, how can I put it? Kind of like a ghetto parts, right? Where now there's, you know, it's kind of spread out a little bit more. But I remember going to Orange County just like thinking it was weird, you know, like why is everybody so nice here? Why is it so peaceful here? I haven't heard a ghetto bird or, or, <laughs> or a sheriff helicopter, you know, since I've been here. And so it was just a completely different area and the only people that I could hang out with were people that, you know, also smoked cigarettes because that was the only drug that I ended up doing. And it's a bad drug, by the way. FYI, if you smoke cigarettes, do your best to stop that because it ain't worth it. And uh, and I know it's hard for sure. So, you know, I'm not one to talk and say, hey, man, stop smoking cigarettes. Like, I don't realize how hard that shit is to quit. But where I'm getting at is that, you know, you, you have to shift your focus. And so when I, um, when I stopped hanging around in the bad area and I started focusing my time towards 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 orange county which is a better part than where i was in la county my circle changed my environment changed and the discovery that i'm that that i made here is that is that you right now whether you know it or not you follow a trend and that trend typically is going to be based on your inner circle and so you might not realize it because it's just your inner circle right like you guys talk a certain way you guys dress a certain way um, you act a certain way like when you guys get all together there's this there's it's like this sh switch that turns on and um, even when you're out from your circle you kind of still resemble the energy of that circle and so my point is and when you discover this you can actually change your results is that is that when you are in a specific circle you are uh, the, I guess the best way I could put it is you're you're following a trend that will not take you further than the level of that inner circle and so i'm not saying you know be friend or, or don't be a friend to um you know that circle anymore like go ahead and just turn your back on them because you're trying to get to that next level where i'm getting at is understand what your circle of friends do for you so if you're in a circle that tends to complain or tends to mope or tends to whine or tends to have a negative 
uh, topic in the in the conversation, like it's always blaming, complaining, or settling, then I want you to realize this and and be at least aware enough to know when to to mute out that circle, and if anything, try and be the voice that uplifts that circle. And if you try and uplift the circle and people are looking at you funny like you in a different like you're talking a different language take that as an invitation to you know to to kind of go and find a new circle because if they were really your friends if they were really your your camp and and people that you should trust they should want to listen to you and follow you they should want to actually you know feed into that solution meaning that they will participate in uplifting everyone else and 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 the key is is when you discover that you have the choice to surround yourself with the right individuals and the right people whether it's through a network event whether it's through um, finding a coach or a mentor or even identifying the top producers within your circle or within your within your organization and starting to befriend them or, or create some sort of contact and relationship take the initiative because typically when you're at a higher level you're not necessarily doing your doing the most to reach out to people at the lower level we you know at a higher level we kind of just wait for those to reach out to us it's very rare that people will will make it, you know it available to everyone like you know like create a podcast for example like these videos like i i i i'm more than happy to 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 reach out to anyone and everyone in any circle i even leave my contact information right below and say hey man if you ever need help if you ever need mentoring feel free to reach out to me and for those of you who are watching and know that i've responded to your dms i've responded whether it's on linkedin facebook instagram the comments on youtube videos like that's me and the reason why is because i at at one time you know when i was when i was at my rock bottom I needed that help to get to the next level and it was it, the what kept me back was myself because I believed that you know like I didn't deserve it or I believed it was hard to get there I believed that that no one wanted me in that inner circle because I stood out and so if I can be that one person that responds and shows you that yes you can get to that higher level yes you can make contact with anyone yes you can as long as you take the initiative you can create the dialogue to help create this path to follow and take you to the levels that you want to be at but it all starts with identifying your current state your current environment and discovering what kind of energy and limitations that environment gives you and having enough self-awareness to discover that you need to get out and 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 expand your network expand your inner circle of friends because until you find that next level of friends where the crowd is is talking about that next level topic right like like they're on they're on a higher higher game like you know you're there because you're like whoa this is some real this is a real topic conversation like they're talking about that next level stuff like you'll know you're there because it's you it's foreign language to you but but you could tell you're there because the people around in within that circle they're just of a different nature they're their dress style their taste their their habits it's um it's not only profound but you will get that sense of it being at the level that you want to go and as long as you stick to that circle and you study that circle you too will naturally gravitate towards that level and when you get onto that level and that becomes your new plane guess what you just discovered the one thing that changes your results and it is in your environment it's your mindset it's how you think walk and talk it's the trend that you follow and the trend that you follow it is actually based on your inner circle it's based on your immediate energy of friends and when you realize this and you discover that oh man i'm just kind of mirroring or echoing the energy that i'm surrounding myself by i might as well mirror and echo the energy of the level that i want to be at so that i can get to the level i want to be at
So I hope this video helps and I hope it helps you discover the way to create the path to take you to exactly where you want to go. Because until I discovered this one thing that it was my environment, you know, I, I wasn't able to make the necessary changes to create the reality that I have today. I remember when I used to pray for the things I have today. And I hope that you get there too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.